So it's 2020, unfortunately, and you're looking to learn how to play Minecraft. Don't worry bro, I got you. I've been playing the game since 2010, and I often forget that other people are just starting out. For some reason I think everybody has been playing the game since it came out like I have. Plus, it also seems like half the tutorials on YouTube were made in like, 1985 and recorded with a Nokia 3000, so I think it's time to bring an updated, fresh take for all of you out there who are wanting to learn everything about Minecraft in 2020. What's going on guys, welcome back to How to Play Minecraft. So step number one is you want to get a bunch of dirt uh, where you can build. I'm not going to waste your time rambling about how I got into Minecraft or throwing out my trash opinions on stuff that you don't want to hear about. I know why you're here, and I respect that. So let's get started on the video. If this helps you out, feel free to drop a like and subscribe to the channel, and maybe even become a channel member. It helps support my work, and I look forward to chatting with you in the future. Let's get started. So you just loaded into a new survival world. The first thing that you're going to want to do is to go to the nearest tree and collect some wood. Wood is used a lot in the early game progression, and it's a resource that you'll need for a while. Once you have some wood, you'll need to make it into a crafting table by opening up your inventory and turning the wood into planks and then assembling it like this. You better grab your notebook because this is a super complex recipe and hopefully you can remember it. The crafting table is how you can craft more complex items and the point is, you definitely need one of these to start out. It's probably one of the most important blocks in the game. But you don't just want to throw this baby anywhere, you want to set up a peaceful and lovely life on a nice piece of land. So, I would recommend looking for somewhere nice that has a lot of resources and placing it down there. Find somewhere that you would consider living, at least temporarily, and make sure you're around a couple of trees. If you're not near any trees, simply punch some leaves to try to get some saplings and bring those with you. Now that you have a crafting table, create some sticks by placing your wood like this, and then combine those sticks with the wood planks to make a wooden pickaxe. Wooden pickaxes are pretty much useless, but you need it to unlock the next tier, stone. Mine down through the dirt and grab three stone where you can follow the same recipe as before and make a stone pickaxe. At this point, you probably need food. You can get food from animals or by finding apples that sometimes fall from the trees. If you go with the first route, you're going to need to kill some animals by creating a stone sword and hitting them with it. Wow, how surprising. Now it's time to cook your food. So you're going to want to get eight more cobblestone and assemble it into the crafting table around the border to make a furnace. You can then use this furnace to cook your food, and later you can use it to smelt ores that you find to make higher grade tools. With a nice meal in your stomach, it's time to get a good night's sleep. Nighttime could be rough at the beginning, so you're probably going to want to sleep to skip through it. To do this, you need three wool from killing sheep, and you need to combine it into a crafting table with some planks underneath it to make a bed. If you can't get enough wool, try killing some spiders, and then you can craft the string from spiders into some wool, but your best bet is to probably try to find some sheep. I'd also recommend throwing some wood logs into the top of your furnace with planks on the bottom to smelt the wood into charcoal. You can then combine the charcoal with a stick to make some torches. Place these torches down where mobs don't spawn around your bed while you're trying to sleep. Again, you could stay through the night if you don't find wool, but if you stay up for more than three nights in a row, phantoms will begin to spawn and they can get super annoying. If you can't find wool, you're going to want to create a shelter. It doesn't have to be pretty, but make sure you're someplace safe where you don't get absolutely murdered by skeletons, spiders, zombies, and most importantly, creepers. Creepers are the worst and they will creep up on you and blow you up into oblivion. At this point, I'm going to assume that you made a bed and went to sleep or waited through the night. It's now a new day and a new Minecraft, and it's time to continue on your epic journey. Today's the day where you want to find some iron. Iron spawns underground, so you're going to want to dig down a bit like this and mine around until you find some. If you don't want to do this, however, you can walk around until you find a cave and locate some iron. It looks like this. While you're searching, you're also going to want to look for coal. Coal's a more efficient way to smelt or cook items in your furnace, and it could also be used to craft things like torches. You can also find redstone, which is used later in the game to brew potions and create crazy automated machines, lapis lazuli, which is used for enchanting and decoration, and other ores like gold, diamonds, and emeralds. You can mine iron, coal, and lapis with your stone pickaxe, but you're going to need an iron pickaxe to mine gold, redstone, diamonds, or emeralds. I would recommend spending some time underground, exploring caves, and mining resources. If you find some iron, make another furnace and smelt the iron to craft better tiered tools and weapons, and continue adventuring until your inventory is full or you have something good. If mobs become a problem, you can make a shield by crafting it with some wood planks and a piece of iron ingot, and if you right click with it, you can protect yourself against mob attacks. It can definitely save your life, which can be super useful if you're playing on hardcore mode like I am in my series that I'm currently in the middle of making on my channel. 
If you want to watch my Minecraft Hardcore series, check out the link in the description. Anyways, now you have some resources and you're starting to get low on food. It's time to go back to the surface and settle down with your newfound wealth. You can make chests to store all of your items by doing the same recipe as the furnace but with wood planks. If you connect two of them together, it makes a bigger chest. Oh, and if you shift click while placing on top of one of the current ones, you can stack them. Play around with building and make your base look nicer, if you want to. I'm not going to force you. I'm also not going to hold your hand on how to do that because some of the best Minecraft experiences are where you discover new building techniques on your own. But I will say, you can place stairs upside down for decoration, and you can get glass by throwing sand into your furnace. Also, I would recommend doors because, well, doors are good. But you need food. You're still exhausted from that mining trip, so you're going to want to make a farm. The easiest way to start out is by getting wheat seeds by punching grass until you find some. Now you want to craft a hoe out of stone or iron and right click some grass or dirt to till up the soil and plant your seeds. You need to find or place dirt blocks near water for this to work. If you aren't near water, you can't plant the seeds. The water will extend out 4 blocks and hydrate the soil in that region. Any further and you're going to want to make another water source by creating a bucket out of iron and moving some water over there. Buckets are also super helpful when mining. If you run into lava, bring a bucket of water with you and place it on the ground where it flows over the lava and turns it into obsidian. At this point, I assume you have a nice house, a nice set of tools, and a small little farm. You have a bed, a place to store your items, and a well-lit area where you can be safe from mobs. But you don't want to stay too safe because killing mobs is extremely useful. You can use spider string to make wool like I mentioned before, and you can also make things like fishing rods and bows. You can use gunpowder from creepers to make TNT, bones from skeletons to make bone meal to help your crops grow, and rotten flesh to hold you over if you're about to die of starvation and don't mind the disgusting taste. Enderpearls are extremely important, and you're going to want to save them if you come across any endermen. Oh, and don't look at their face if you're trying to kill them because they will teleport away. And don't spam click. You want to click, wait for the little bar to refill, and then click again. Spam clicking doesn't work because Mojang wanted to change a mechanic and make it a lot stupider, so yeah, keep that in mind. But the iron lifestyle isn't for everyone. It's a great mid-tier set of items, but you're going to need higher quality items to progress further. You're going to need diamonds. To find diamonds, dig down to Y equals 11 or 11 blocks up from bedrock. You can find your Y level by hitting F3 on the PC version of Minecraft or by turning on coordinates in the other versions. Dig a staircase down until you get to that level, and dig a strip mine or explore caves to find diamonds. Make sure you stick to that region if you want to find them, because going higher makes them harder, if not impossible, to find. Also, there's usually a lot of lava around this area, so before you mine a diamond, dig around it to ensure that it's not going to fall in lava. The way you use your first set of diamond tools is up to you. You can either make a sword, a pickaxe, other tools, or you can save them for an enchanting table. Let's talk about enchanting for a second. Enchanting is how you make higher end tools and weapons. See that XP bar at the bottom? You're going to want to get to level 30 if you want to get decent enchants. Anything less is honestly a waste of time, so just save your levels and try to get up there. Once you're level 30, you can make an enchanting room like this and enchant your weapons or armor. To make an enchanting room, you're going to need to get a lot of sugarcane and leather, which is found from sugarcane and cows, and you then turn the sugarcane into paper, combine it with the leather to make books, and combine those books with wood to make bookshelves. You're going to want to get 15 bookshelves to get to a level 30 enchant, so this could take quite a while, meaning that I would recommend doing it as you play. Once you have 15 bookshelves, again, you want to arrange them like this and plop an enchanting table in the middle to enchant all of your stuff to item level 30. Once you have this done, all you have to do is throw your item in there along with some lapis and click the level 30 to get a random 30 level enchant. Now back on topic, I'm going to assume you have 3 diamonds because you're one lucky miner and you struck it rich on your first trip. Make your diamond pickaxe and find a lava source. Pour your water bucket next to this area to turn the lava into obsidian. From here, you're going to want to get at least 10 of it in order to make your nether portal. Okay, so you now have 10 obsidian and you can now make a nether portal. You're going to want to arrange it like this, with 2 at the bottom, 3 on each side, and 2 more at the top. You can leave the corners empty because you don't have to use them to make it work. If you want it to look better, you can put a decorative block in this area later on. Once you have your nether portal frame built, get some flint from mining gravel until it randomly decides to drop one, combine it with a piece of iron ingot, and create a flint and steel. When you right click your portal frame, it'll set on fire and turn into a functional nether portal. When you go in, you will be faced with the most terrifying thing that you've ever seen. Lava, scary mobs, fortresses, and much more will be directly in your face, and you're going to want to make sure you're ready to handle it. 
It's the next step in your progression and it's pretty rewarding if you have the courage to brave it. So check out the second part in this educational series where I talk about how the nether works and give you some valuable advice for braving your first nether adventure. For now, let me tell you three important things. When you first get to the nether, cover your portal with cobblestone to make sure it doesn't get broken and you have some protection. Always have a flint and steel on you when you're in the nether because if something hits your portal, it'll break and you'll be stuck there. And finally, do not try to sleep in the nether. It will not work out in your favor, so please don't try it at home. These tips are here to help you out with the basics of how to play Minecraft. As I said before, part 2 of this series talks about how the nether works and how you need to use it to progress. Again, there are multiple ways to progress in this game, and there isn't one set way to play. So, my advice is not the only advice on the internet. But, hopefully it helps. If you're looking to help out your room with some sick decorations on the other hand, I would recommend checking out Pixel Empire, the sponsor of today's video. Pixel Empire is an amazing website filled with awesome pop culture and gaming themed posters, art, and merchandise. They have tons of different designs, and if you're a nerd at heart or just like cool artwork, you will definitely find something that you enjoy. They have a different set of limited edition posters every week, and they're constantly selling out, so those are definitely a good start if you want something unique and awesome. Everything I own from them is super cool, and I genuinely stand behind their products, as you can see here. And here. And here. They also have some new face masks that they've been selling a lot of, and they're definitely not like any of the other ones I've seen. So if you're interested, check out their site linked below and use code ROBOCAST for 10% off your entire order. Your purchases help to support the channel and they are highly appreciated. Anyways, that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed, make sure to check out part 2 linked in the description and subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys next time and peace.